indeed it is a pivotal point in the history of the Himalayan uh, country that is still in its nascent uh, phase of democratization process. Given a recent history of political violence that uh, where Nepal was marred by a decade-long civil conflict that claimed tens of thousands of lives, there's been a level of trepidation with these latest elections. Uh, strife in Nepal was expected to end in 2006 when a peace deal was struck with Maoist rebels, and in 2008 when a 240-year-long uh, monarchy came to an end, paving way for what should have been a constituent assembly. But the power vacuum has persisted. Now, will these latest elections uh, bring Nepal closer to drafting its constitution? We're joined by Rajneesh Pandari, our correspondent based in Kathmandu, where polls have just taken place. Welcome, Rajneesh. Hi, Prithi. Good evening from Kathmandu. Thank you uh, for joining us today. Could you brief us with the latest? How have the different political parties fared? And security appears to have been a big concern. Uh, the latest updates is that around 70% votes have been cast during the Constituent Assembly election held today, according to the Election Commission of Nepal. And this is the highest turnover so far. Uh, 12 million voters had registered to take part in this election, and the voting started at 7 a.m. and was over at 5 p.m. Despite some anti-election activities that went around, such as bombing at some places, there was overwhelming presence of voters at most of the polling booths. Uh, I visited several polling booths in Kathmandu and I could see people were very excited to vote and the vote counting will start soon uh, in the urban areas and tomorrow in the rural areas according to the spokesperson of the election commission Preeti. As you pointed out, the results are yet to be announced and the votes are being counted. Now, Nepal had braced itself uh, for uh, spates of violence, including closing the border to India and even a four-day public holiday. Meanwhile, some felt that this might be a turning point in the peace process, while others feel that it's still an uphill battle. But what are the voters themselves saying? Let's have a quick look. Yes, well, the three people in the school are not going to be able to do it. Some of the people who are not going to be able to do it, some of the people who are not going to be able to do it. Some of the people who are not going to be able to do it. Some of the people who are not going we hope that they better understand this time, you know, otherwise, otherwise people will react differently, you know, and, uh, and uh, there is a lot of commitment also that they have failed in the past. Well, these are reactions from the public that Rajneesh himself recorded. Uh, now, what is the atmosphere like, Rajneesh? Are people, do people feel that there'll still be a split between the different parties? Right now, it's now the people are, you know, very much waiting for the results now, and especially the Maoist led 33 party alliance, they, 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 they tried to obstruct the polls, but the election commission said that they are successfully complete, they have successfully uh, completed the whole election uh, and the voting has been completed and now the vote counting will start from tomorrow morning. So uh, the people are saying and some people still feel that, you know, the 33 party alliance will still try to obstruct 
uh, the constituent, uh, you know, making process in in the future. And uh, uh, the, the people out here are also saying that you know there should be dialogue among the political parties, and there shouldn't be you know protest more protest, and there should be peace and consensus uh, in the country. That's what they said when well, well, I spoke to the people who were you know in, in the polling stations, pretty. Well, as you point out, the Maoist alliance, the main uh, opposition group um, in the country, has contested that the elections might not be free and fair, and they have been holding protests in the country ahead of the elections. Rajneesh also managed to um, record the uh, impressions from a former speaker on the political challenges that lie ahead. There has been bun, there has been hartal, there has been strikes in different parts of the country again this background council assembly is taking place so they will be opposing the very formation of this council assembly so i think there will be more political challenges this time so in one way or other you know even in order to pacify the maoist outside the election the the uh, maoist parties in parliament and other parties will be forced upon to uh, to come forward uh, to the people with a draft of a constitution. Well, Rajneesh, in wrapping up the conversation, uh, drafting a constitution has been a challenge over several rounds. Why is this? Uh, Preeti, Nepal's uh, CA was elected in 2008 as a part of the Comprehensive Peace Agreement. Uh, so Nepal's constitution writing process is the core for the accomplishment of the peace process. However, with the emergence of contentious issues such as the form of federalism, moreover, federal system over ethnic lines, forms of government and issues of secularism, constitution writing process has stood as a major challenge and lack of consensus among the political parties was the major reason behind this pretty. Well, you say lack of consensus. One of the main bones of contention has been whether Nepal uh, remains a secular system or where Hinduism, which was a large part of uh, the political system when the country was a kingdom, will remain dominant. Are there concerns still on this end, Rajneesh? Uh, there are some political parties uh, like uh, uh, the Rashtriya Prasadantra Party, RPP, Nepal, who are trying to voice, the, you know, some some issues on Hinduism and all other things. But the major political parties, the Nepali Congress, uh, the Unified Maoist, and UML, uh, they are agreeing on secularism. They they, they want. Uh, all religion, all caste, all people, everyone to live under under the same 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 nation. And so they are agreeing on this consensus. But uh, but majorly, the, it it was the federation and uh, the the form of federalism, the federal system was was one of the burning problems that could not be solved. And that's how the constituent assembly was dissolved last time. So people still fear that this should not happen this time with, with this new Constituent Assembly that is going to be formed soon. Well, Rajneesh, thank you for joining us today and we hope to hear more from you on the result of these very important polls for Nepal. Thanks, Preeti. Absolutely. That was Rajneesh Pandari, our roving correspondent based in Kathmandu, reporting on Nepalese elections.